So my name is Ronnie Ray, and I'm the Senior Director of DNA Automation. So essentially, I run management and uh, controllers, so APKM, Prime Infrastructure, all of the things that you see around ESA that you might have seen in some of the demos. So those are basically coming out of my team. Uh, just in background, I've been in network management building software for 20 years. So I've basically kind of seen the industry go from you know, doing things, obviously, which is uh, still in the box, uh, looking at client server, going into virtualization, now of course SDN, and everything in between, application, server, systems, uh, you know, all of the things, and, and of course cloud, you know, pretty much in there. Now, uh, it is a very exciting time to be in the network management industry because all of the things that we're talking about right now is about simplicity. So you guys, and I think the earlier presenter, Tim, uh, who certainly very works very closely with us, uh, he has illustrated, and you guys have absolutely acknowledged, you know, how complex it is and how to make it simple, and I think I already heard the word here, which is abstraction. And the way to get to abstraction is really to bring in a new mediation layer on top of the network, and that mediation layer is the controller. So before I get into the controller technology itself, and uh, Ramit is here with me, part of my team, and essentially we will take what Tim talked about and turn that into reality in software. It's not one click, but it, it is a few clicks, but it is phenomenally more simple than what we have been able to achieve thus far in looking at uh, how network management has evolved. Now, before I get there, though, I, what I wanted to kind of establish is a little bit about where does a controller fit and what's the market business context a little bit in terms of so that we understand, even though this is tech field A, we know exactly in a SDN, there's various flavors of SDN. So I want to just situate APKM, and I'll, I'll probably take a couple of minutes on that and then go into what's really the core of APKM, what's the core functionality that we are trying to deliver here. So let me write three things on the board. So the way that we see uh, the market is there are essentially three kinds of players. So there's artisan customers that essentially are saying, give me the APIs on the device, give me an API on the controller, give me any kind of API. I need direct access, I can build what I want. And that is service providers, that is large enterprises. So this is in the hundreds of uh, customers that's out there. The second one, what we call, is the architecture customer. So this is typically an enterprise, could be an MSP, uh, typically in the thousands to the tens of thousands, uh, where essentially what they are saying is, I want packaged. And I know I've, you know, I've read many of your blogs uh, that, that you uh, folks have written. Clearly, we're talking about simplicity, packaged, but there's also, when you talk about architecture, some flexibility. And therefore, that marriage of simplicity with flexibility is obviously a balance. And then we are trying to achieve that. And you'll see APKM is very much positioned in this architecture segment. And then you have, of course, somebody you know, that's basically saying, I want simple, I want completely out of the box, I need very, very few knobs. And Meraki is a great example of that. And of course, uh, you know, what we are doing with APKM, hopefully with some of the solutions that you'll see, also kind of plays into that. So now looking at the market, of course, you know, there is multiple solutions that are coming out uh, from the market trying to look at bringing in a controller for these different types of customers and different kinds of needs. And APKM, as I kind of talked about, is basically in this portion of the market. We're not trying to look at you know, the artisan market. There is uh, certainly ODL that's out there. There's certainly network, uh, uh, the NSO uh, capability from Cisco that's out there. There's lots of other good, good solutions that's out there. There is kind of custom, I want to build my own application. I'm going to use the APIs. And of course, you have the Googles and the Amazons and you know, all of the MSTCs that's out in the world that's building their own controllers. So that is, you know, that's, that's a different market. Now, the second part, what I wanted to kind of get to is what's the hub of what we are trying to build and why, why did we start on this journey? So let me just start with something which is uh, at the core, and the core is really simplicity. So the way networks have been spoken to from any kind of configurator till now is basically through existing methods. You know, CLI, it's SNMP, wireless is more SNMP based, uh, routes which obviously has been very CLI based. And essentially the variability from platforms to OS to features and what Tim kind of presented. And a QoS is expressed in a different way in a 2K to a 4K to a 6K. Uh, and depending on the OS, there might be even tweaks that within that uh, domain itself makes it you know, tremendously complex to be able to absorb all of that and then go out and deploy that. So the way we have to look at simplicity is to first to change the paradigm that how we talk to the network. And that paradigm is really going from direct access to the box through some programmatic interface or some protocol, I should say, to something which we all understand now as policy. So the first real migration 
of starting to simplify is let's build in that abstraction layer of the controller and the abstraction layer of the controller now starts to express north bound to it something which is much more simpler much more abstracted but still gives you the flexibility still gives you programmatic power so it's not kind of taking away everything but certainly it's making it much more simpler and the other part is in a given Cisco's capability and what we do in the market it has to be end to end so it's not just a in place in a one place in the network, can't just be the WAN, can't just be the campus, can't just be the branch or the data center. All of this has to work together. And which is, again, uh, you know, definitely a, that's a pretty complicated task. It's not easy. So if I look at, you know, if this is the goal, what are the fundamental tenets on which this goal uh, needs to be achieved? And so the first thing I would write there, which I think you know, we've already kind of talked about, is abstraction. So what we have done over the last two years uh, with APKM is we have looked at all of the devices, legacy and new. Now, many of the new SDN uh, startups that have been there or the approaches that are coming to market, they can start new, Cisco cannot. We've got tens of millions of devices that's out there. And therefore, we had to spend the time to kind of look at how do I build a controller that can talk equally well to something that's already out there, that's sitting in the, in the field, that's with a customer and are doing work today on the network, and something that's coming tomorrow, which is what we are calling the DNA-ready infrastructure. And therefore, the controller needs to kind of do the abstraction for both legacy and new. The second part is, you know, a lot of our energy, including in you know, some of the blogs that I read uh, from you folks, are talking about, you know, what's the southbound protocol? And I think all of us agree, and I'm seeing already that trend of saying the southbound protocol is slowly going to get less and less important. Because just, just, that's just a protocol. It is, you know, today it is SNMP or CLI, of course it's OpenFlow, of course it's NetConf Yang, uh, and these are technologies, technologies will evolve. But the goal of the controller is how do I abstract what's happening on my individual devices to obviously network as a system, but at the end of it when I build applications on top, that they should be able to talk to the devices regardless of what southbound protocol I use. Are you doing anything to specifically address the fear of abstraction? Because the big thing that I hear from a lot of longtime professionals is, I trust myself, I trust the CLI, I know what I'm doing, I don't immediately trust the abstraction to go out and touch my stuff. Absolutely, so the first step you know, we are doing is, and it's really twofold, that's an excellent question, Justin. So starting with, if you look at you know, doing a dry run, which is before I push anything, we will give you, you know, what the policy with all its context, what does the CLI look like, what's going out? So at least you can go through that and you know that you know, this is obviously kosher in terms of uh, the logic within the controller, what's it's resulted in. And then the second part is we're kind of working on, you know, I, would, I wouldn't call them simulation systems, but at least go out and you know, active push to maybe a couple of devices, maybe a pilot implementation, where you kind of obviously, you know, you, have your, you get your hands dirty a little bit to say, yep, this policy thing works. And that gives you a little bit more confidence. And the third part is, and which is what I am just coming back from the session on the enterprise network side. I mean, there's a whole new host of education that we are doing at the policy level as part of the DNA trainings and certifications. What is the programmability that's coming on top? And so education here, but obviously visibility into the CLI here, that is going to be absolutely important for this transition process because we need to build the confidence as we go forward. So well, I, think just as, I think just as a thought <coughs> too, People have gotten bit by that in, in our industry in the past, right? You used to mm -hmm. go, okay, well, we're going to set this up, and it's going to create this VPN, or it's going to do this thing, yeah. or it's going to whatever. And across all brands, not, of course. not Cisco. You push a button, 95% of it works, the whole thing breaks, and now you've got a brick you know, mm -hmm. box whatever. network, got to go rip it all out and whatever, right? 800 so miles this, away from a human. Yeah, yeah, so if this stuff actually starts you know, working, people start to see it working you know, over time, they're going to, I think, get that confidence. They're going to start, you know, stop looking at everything, stop fact-checking every single line, and just go, "Hey, this is this is actually rock solid. It, it works for and us." And if we can lab test this with things like iOS V and CSR 1000 Vs and that sort of thing, so that we can actually build the configuration in the lab and say, "Yes, that is going to deploy properly, and it's going to work," we're going to have something. Because right now. There's a lot of abstraction and orchestration engines out there that are really good and they have the pretty pictures and the nice little single plane of, of glass, if you will, mm -hmm. but they abstract it to the point that they isolate. So right. if there's a problem at the end point, you're not allowed to see it. Mm -hmm. We and, got bit by UC520 on that real bad. Well, that and, was one of the first. And, and there are other solutions now that are quite popular where if there's a problem connecting to the internet, you, you've got a PPPoE authentication thing, 
you're not allowed to look at it. You have to call their tech support and find out what the problem is. Yep. And, and that, we can't have that. We're, in, we're the professionals in this. We're not outsourcing that part of our job in the name of abstraction. The uh, largest absolutely. ask I've seen, by the way, about APIC EM is people want integration between APIC EM and viral to be able to trial what they're yes. doing in viral. Absolutely. And I think they it, have that. Everyone's asking for that and to have, like, so I can try stuff out virtually in viral. <laughs> I think the viral team actually said it does. I, I thought I saw that tweet a little while ago. I think ago. people have kind of done it, like forced it to work maybe, but I don't think it's officially supported, is it? So that is certainly one of the line of actions that we have. In fact, trying to look at that simulation, which is on viral, but uh, to your point, I mean, it is, uh, you know, there's still a lot more work to do. Mm. But again, you know, to the discussion here, we are taking this as seriously as using APKM kind of our, to be a solution test pad in Cisco. So as and when new solutions come out, you are basically looking at using APKM as the mediator, pushing out the configs, and, that, and those use cases becomes something that's tested for scale and tested for functionality within all of our engineering teams. So absolutely, we understand you know, the, the, uh, the concern that you guys are raising here. One this, more one more point to kind of this conversation, and I think the one, I don't know if it's widely being asked for, but is, is change validation. So the, the idea of when I push something, if I'm going to do something that's somehow going to disconnect me from managing that device, I want it to roll back, right? And this is one of, one, one of the things with, you know, <clears throat> calling out a little bit, but iOS doesn't quite do, where some of the other Cisco um, platforms will do roll back a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. It's simple, reload in five. Well, Mor <laughs> well but, but see, that's, not, that's not always appropriate. But Meraki, right. do, Meraki does that. So right. if, you, if you make a bad change on Meraki and it, 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 will roll it realizes that you broke something by accident, exactly. it will roll it back in a moment and then say, I undid that because you broke something. Exactly. And that's, I, think, I think that would also lead to the, the confidence thing. If I do, because I, I really, you know, like if I'm making a change, I recognize the fact that it can break something. But the worst thing I'm worried about is breaking a remote system that I can't then get into after I do the change. And so that's, that's the biggest fear because that's the long outage, right? You know, I'm going to have a window for this change anyway. You know, like, and then you have to send somebody over. Yeah, then there's somebody, somebody over there. And, Absolutely. Yep. I mean, uh, agreed. And what you'll see in the easy cost demonstration, because we're going to bring to light what Tim was talking about and how to make that simple, mm -hmm. rollback is very much integral to what we are doing. Okay, good. And you'll see the functionality. The second part what I wanted to talk about was automation. So this is, you know, so we've talked about abstraction, southbound becoming agnostic. The second part is how do we use the controller and the abstraction to do massive simplicity in automation? So today if I look at, you know, for example, the cost of OPEX that goes into really managing and feeding caring and a remote site management of a device, and if I have to send a truck roll to a, a branch, for example, those are multiple times the cost of the device itself. And so almost it behooves us as an industry to kind of look at this and say, how do I make it easier to day zero deploy? How do I do something that's completely hands-free deployment? So the first problem that we actually took out was plug and play. And we said, okay, let's make that an easy way to access the controller, use the controller, because this is in a somewhat benign. I know what config I'm pushing. It's a bootstrap. And there's multiple ways for the device to come back to the controller. And this way, at least I start to kind of get that zero touch deployment going. And this is multiple ways, DNS, DHCP, and of course, and you guys already know that. And then now we're also adding the cloud capability. So it's just like Meraki, Cisco devices will be able to go back to the cloud, get their bootstrap. Uh, they will know where, where APKM lives and get the bootstrap from APKM to start with. The second part is we are scaling this with something we call ESA, which is being demonstrated on, on the uh, show floor. So this is enterprise service automation. And this is allows the templatization of, let's say, your site profiles of how you would look a branch or a campus to look like, and then using PNP, using automation, and really being able to push that out at scale across you know, hundreds of thousands of those. And then the last part is you know, really the using of policy for all of the solutions that we have. And, so, and this could be IWAN, this could be uh, you know, things that we're doing on the access side, and these are all core to really bringing that OPEX down, making it faster and simpler to deploy. However, I mean, you know, a controller cannot stop there, so the key part of a controller is really control. Now, granted that everything that we are doing initially is somewhat more management focused, because that's the first step, and I think going back to the discussion earlier, this is about how do we get to a point where people trust this thing? And so this gets you to trust, because you start to do little things, you start to take the little steps, and then we are looking at sublimation of device capabilities. 
that today live in the device. Obviously, it's not everything. It's a, it's a very measured way of kind of looking at what needs to be centralized and what needs to be distributed based on scale and edge analytics and everything else that needs to happen in the device. But we're already looking at capabilities that start to go to control. And Ramit will talk about in the cost context, and what does control look like? What can, for example, a live interaction between a call manager and an APK EM look like? And what happens out of that? And I'll let uh, Ramit speak to that. And then the last part is what we are trying to do is, you know, uh, which all our executives are certainly talking about, which is programmability. And uh, this is all about APIs. So APIs is at the core. Everything that we build in the controller has APIs that's exposed not one. And this is RESTConf today. We are kind of looking at a Yang model expression in the future. So clearly there, is, there will be a lot of ways to access, do service creation, do really neat things while we continue down the package part of the solutions that we, that we already have. So really concluding the session, you know, what I'm trying to look at is, and, and convey here, is as we go down this path of APKM, you know, first we have taken care of legacy and we have taken care of new. We are looking at bringing in this really massive simplicity in automation. We're kind of looking at new control use cases. So in the future, as we kind of look at routing functions, which of those functions run in iOS on the device and which run in the controller is an active conversation that's happening right now. And then the fourth part is on the API side. And of course, not everybody and every customer can consume APIs because it requires a certain degree of skill. Uh, we are bringing in these packet solutions that have much more simpler capability in terms of expressing policy in terms of business intent, which, you know, which we all know, and which is where, again, a lot of um, innovation is going on right now in terms of whether it's NIC or Alto or you know, there's multiple group-based policies. And this will obviously develop. And the new standard in the future for probably this kind of an architecture is probably at this business intent and policy level. So given where we are going right now, let me see if, I, if there are any questions at you know, where APKM is. We launched in November of last year. We today already have about you know, several thousand downloads, uh, multiple hundreds of customers that are in production with APKM. And of the key use cases they've started with is PNP, uh, is easy costs. We were going to de demo today because as Tim kind of laid out the technical architecture of that, we're going to show you how easy costs is taking that complexity, trying to make that simple.